Good morning. Welcome to another week. I promise you we'll get on to the, the cover for the generator scene. <laughs> However, I thought I'd start things off a little differently this week. Um, by way of a little bit of background and explanation, I started my YouTube channel essentially as a way of sending postcards home to you, my friends and family, so that you could see what was happening in my new life here in Australia as opposed to just hearing about it in phone calls or emails. But I realised that for a lot of you, this was the first time that you will have used YouTube. And I thank you so much for going to the trouble to learn something new. But I realised that my channel's developing and I'm doing more things with it. And you maybe aren't aware of it. So what I thought I'd do now is just give you a quick overview of my channel and how it works and how I use it in the hope that maybe you can start getting a bit more out of it maybe than you currently are. So with that being said, if you're already very comfortable with YouTube, you know exactly what you're doing, you may want to skip this next bit. Use the timestamps below and skip on. However, if you feel like getting to know a bit more about my channel and how YouTube works will be of use or interest to you. Keep on watching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep talking, but I'll be recording me on my channel on my laptop. I do appreciate that there are multiple ways that you can watch my channel, say on a mobile phone, on a computer, or even these days through your television. So I can only really show you how it looks on my laptop, but the principles are the same, even if it might be slightly different, depending on how you watch. So basically, here I am on my home screen, and at the top there are all these little um, tabs that we can click on, and I'll talk a bit more about that. But this is the first page you land on. So at the top we've got all of my videos, arranged chronologically or a selection of them and then underneath that I've got um, playlists that I've created which groups videos together by categories so these are all my shorts and I'll talk about that in a bit these are videos that I've called specials and then I've arranged them by season so it's very simple you just have these two categories and say for example you want to go into the spring play playlist you just Go there, click on view full playlist and these are all my videos that I've recorded during the spring season arranged this time chronologically. Then what I can do is go back to my homepage. The other way you can navigate is by clicking on the videos and then this is a grid of all of my videos this time. All my full length videos again arranged chronologically. So this is the two ways that you can access my videos either through the home page or by clicking on the videos. Then next to that we have shorts. You may have noticed I've started making shorts and what that basically is are videos that are up to a maximum of 60 seconds long. And the way I've been making shorts are they're either clips from the video that was released on that Friday or they're clips from videos I've posted previously, like this one. This was from last winter and I posted that yesterday. Or they're brand new films that I've made, like this one, this one and this one. So this is another way you can maybe connect with me by looking up my shorts and watching those. Um, you may already have seen them because they may be clips or they may be new, but they won't be they won't take up much of your time because they're only a maximum of 60 seconds long. So if I, for example, go into this one, if I click on that. That'll take me to the shorts, which will start playing. And if I pause that, another thing that you can do is somewhere on your screen, 
you'll have the ability to click on usually three dots. It might be on the side like this, or it might be actually on the short, it might be at the bottom, it might be at the top. You can click on the description and then I will usually have written a little piece of text to accompany the short if you want to know more about it. So if I go back, the next thing is my community tab. Now I'm very proud that I've got this. Normally you need a certain amount of subscribers to have a community tab, but I think because I've been consistent in posting, YouTube have kindly given me one. So I have started pasting a couple of things onto my community tab and I click on it and it looks like this. So what this will mostly be are photographs and then some accompanying text. So this is what this one looks like, which I also pasted yesterday. A bit of text and then a couple of photos that I took following a bonfire. And then the first one I pasted is this one. A little bit of text and then a series of photos because it was very beautiful that morning. So that's what that looks like. So if I go back to videos, if I click on this latest video, there are a couple of things that I want to show you when you're actually watching my videos. A few things here beyond the video that I did want to talk about that you may or may not know. So below every video, I always go to quite a lot of trouble to write um, a detailed description. So if I click here, this is the description box on show more, you'll see this description pop up. And what you'll find here is a description of what's in the video. And then I always give my videos what's known as timestamps. So this is where I divide my video up into um, categories of what you can see. And then <laughs> you may be able to see here at the bottom of the screen, each section has a different name and has a start and a finish line. So you might be able to see that. So say, for example, you go in the description and you see that the first section is about keeping the driveway under control and you're like, oh, that sounds really boring, <clears throat> but starting the Subaru Brumbry sounds really interesting. If you click on that, it'll take you straight to the section, which is starting the Subaru Brumby. So you can skip all that stuff about the driveway that you may not be interested in. <laughs> And then underneath that, I have some links to things that I talk about. Sometimes it's things that I've talked that I've bought that I'm talking about. And sometimes it's references to things that I've mentioned, like in this case, possums. Now, believe it or not, it is possible for people to earn their living off of YouTube. But you need certain things in place before you can start doing that. And number one is you need a certain amount of subscribers. So as you can see, I'm subscribed to my own channel. So if you're not subscribed, that's something, to worth, that's something that's worth considering. However, you need a YouTube account in order to subscribe. So if you don't have one, it's not worth setting one up. Just carry on watching my videos as normal. The other thing you can do is if you've liked the video you've seen, you can click here and give it a good thumbs up. And actually, conversely, if you thought it was rubbish, <laughs> you can give it a thumbs down to let me know you didn't like it. There's nothing wrong with that. And then lastly, if you're interested, you can, uh, if you've got a YouTube account, you can send me comments. And that's always fun. Um, I'm always pleased to hear from you. And the, the, the same is true if I go back to like the community tab. Here, this is say this is the video I posted of the bonfire. You can give it a thumbs up if you've liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't. And if you click this symbol here, comment, you can also send me a comment relating to my community posts. And <laughs> it'll come as no surprise to you to know that you can do the same on the shorts. 
so you can give it a thumbs up and this is the same symbol that says comments and you can send me a comment if you want. Just keep in mind though that um, your comments will be public so everyone in the whole world would be able to read them so if you're not comfortable with that idea then don't bother but uh, I hope that's helped give you a better idea of how YouTube works and how you can use it and the different things that you can do with it. Well, at long last, you may be saying to yourselves the bit you've probably all been waiting for, the big reveal of our new generator cover and in fact our new generator, which you won't have seen yet. So as you can see, it's probably a very large anti-climax. Um, but you will have seen us laying the concrete slab and then pushing the gravel on top and pushing up the posts. And you will have seen Will with this beautiful slow-mo angle grinding, cutting the uh, metal roof to shape. So since then, what we've done is obviously um, attach the roof. I don't know if I even go further back, if you'll be able to really see that, but you know what corrugated iron looks like, <laughs> probably. <laughs> anyway, so um, we put on the roof and attach these cross pieces for support. We also put a bit of silicone just at the join there where it's directly above the generator. To protect it from the weather, we got some of these second kindling poles that I've been keeping and we constructed a little wall here and in front of the wall we've planted out a Chinese star jasmine. The intention being that this will, with a bit of training, grow up this fence and uh, provide even more weather protection for the generator from this side, as well of course being beautiful and fragrant. The only problem we've got is it's the depths of winter now and it's not entirely happy with frost. That's why I've put it in this bubble wrap cage rather than a metal cage. So fingers crossed it'll survive its first winter and then we hopefully will be pretty good from there. And then last but by no means least, our new generator. I will say that it currently isn't working. <laughs> now it does generate power, we've run a couple of tools off of it so we know that it does work in that respect but it currently isn't able to supply the house with electricity. Now we've tried the auto run function, so what that means is when the battery gets below a certain voltage, it'll turn itself on and then we'll be on generator power, or we can turn the dial and start it manually, in which case um, we don't need to worry about waiting for the power to get really low. However, although it's been all wired in and we've been shown how to use it, it isn't currently being able to supply the battery with power. So we can't quite use it yet. Um, <laughs> lots of contacting, tearing and throwing has been going on between us and various people involved and no one's come up with a solution yet. But hopefully that will be imminent. I guess no problem is unsolvable. And for those of you who are interested, this is the model that we have. And from this side, Will wanted a little bit extra roof cover for his uh, saw horses, but we didn't need it all the way along. So that's why we stopped there. Anyway, this is how it looks. We're very pleased with that and uh, we just need now the final piece of the jigsaw is the generator to actually start working. 